Hello everybody, welcome to a new Fundcast episode and I'm very happy to have a new guest. Hi! Um, Kathleen, I, I guess, I suppose that a lot of our viewers already know that uh, what Charity Water does, but uh, could you give us a brief uh, introduction of your favorite organization, I guess? <laughs> yeah, so Charity Water is a nonprofit organization that was founded in 2006 by Scott Harrison. Our goal is to bring clean and safe drinking water to every person on the planet. We send 100% of what we raise from the public directly to fund clean water projects in the field. And we prove all of uh, those public donations that have been raised by okay. plotting the GPS coordinates, photos, and community information about the water projects once they've been complete. I'm the uh, product marketing manager here. I've been here for four years. So I've seen the organization grow quite significantly uh, in the last couple of years. And my role, I straddle a bunch of different things. I work a lot with our influencers uh, mm -hmm. on our online fundraising platform where people can give up their birthdays or walk across America or jump out of airplanes all to raise money for clean water. And then I also actually look at our digital products online. So what does our subscription product look like? What does our fundraising platform look like? How do we build new features and you know take them out to market and get people to actually interact with them uh, and be excited about being part of the Charity Water family? All right, and um, how does Charity Water get its donation? Is it 100% by online fundraising, digital fundraising? So it's 100% of all public donations. The way that we can do this is we actually fundraise separately for our operations and okay. it's made up of a group of about 105 people right now and they're known as well members and they make a commitment to fund staff salaries, flights to the field, the ink that's in our printer and then we can promise 100% of the public donations that go to the field. So that is, you know, people who donate online, who start fundraising campaigns. We also have uh, kind of a different side of the house. We call it the key relationships team that focuses more on that traditional fundraising. Uh, but 100% of those donations also go to fund clean water projects in the field. Okay, so the traditional fundraising uh, tools, you mean like major gift fundraising and... Exactly. Uh, all right. Yep, major donor fundraising, yeah. which a lot of people, you know, most nonprofits have that and they focus a lot of time and their attention on it. We see that about 50% of our donations to fund water projects mm -hmm. come through online. Um, okay. And then the other 50% are from that major donor side of the organization. And, and do, you still, or do you send out uh, the, the traditional mailing packages as well? <laughs> So we don't do any direct mail marketing. Okay. Um, we have never solicited donations by sending things through the mail. Everything that we do has been done digitally. Mm -hmm. However, for some of those major donors, when we say that we prove all of our clean water projects, if you sponsor a project or you donate online, we actually tell you exactly what we do with your money specifically. Okay. And for the major donors, they actually do get a mailed packet. If you give in the online realm, you get an, like an online digital experience. Okay. But in terms of actually raising funds and bringing in new donors, it's all driven through email marketing campaigns and kind of major marketing campaigns that are all done digitally. Okay, and it, it doesn't matter if I give you 50 US dollar or 50,000, you, you really tell me what you exactly do with it, uh, with a donation. Yep, we, um, I mean, that's why I love our online fundraising platform for, you know, we have a little six-year-old right now who sells lemonade in Canada. She's mm -hmm. done 12 lemonade stands and she's raised $5,300, which is actually unbelievable. Yeah. Um, it's way higher than the average of what we see on our online fundraising platform. But as a six-year-old, she could never donate $5,000 to Charity Water, but she's raised that money. And her campaign will run for about three months. That's the average time that we have a campaign open. Once it closes, it takes us about 21 months, but we report back to her with exactly what we did with her money. So if we send her money to Kenya, she'll get a report along with all of her donors. Even if they gave $1, they'll get a report in 21 months that shows the GPS coordinates that click through to Google Maps. They'll have photos from the actual project that we tied her dollars to or your dollars to as a donor and you'll get information about that community specifically. Okay and, and why does it take exactly 21 months? Is there a reason behind it or? 
Yeah, there is. So when we send funds to the field, we actually have a water programs team here internally that fills big million dollar or multi-million dollar grants. So there's hundreds of projects that are a part of that. We don't report back to donors and fundraisers um, until all of those projects in that grant have been completed because there's a lot of like things that could happen in the field. Once we send the money to the field, we're doing it all based on proposal. Mm -hmm. You know, there could be... Um, a site that comes up dry and we need to actually drill a well somewhere else or have a different type of interve intervention. So we wait for all of the projects in a grant to be done before we can report back in case there are some things that change and shift throughout mm -hmm. that granting cycle. And we see that it takes about 21 months. Okay. All right. And um, so and, and what are the most important fundraising tools, online fundraising tools uh, for Charity Water uh, that you are actually using? Yeah, so I think that's, you know, for us, we, when Scott founded Charity Water, he wanted to, uh, what was really important to him was having the 100% model, okay. proving it, so that transparency, but also having a really great brand. So the second hire he ever made in the organization was a designer mm -hmm. who had been with the organization for almost its entire life. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's been really important to who we are. And when we do major digital marketing campaigns, there is such a brand identity associated with those. And there's a story component. People want to know that they're giving to something and they want to help solve whatever the problem is in front of them. And I think that we've seen that work really well at Charity Water. When it comes to fundraising campaigns, it's interesting because I've spent so much time doing that peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. Mm -hmm. And I see a lot of people promote their campaigns on social media, which is amazing for raising awareness. But the actual power in getting donations as an individual fundraiser comes from sending an email. Yeah. We've seen that the conversion rate from asking for a donation to getting a donation is significantly higher when the fundraiser sends an email to their mm -hmm. friends and their family explaining why this is important and giving them the link to their campaign to actually donate. Yeah. I think that there's a lot of this um, in social media, I call it plausible deniability, mm -hmm. where if I post something on social media now, I actually have no idea who saw it. There's so much noise on yeah. Twitter, or on Facebook, but if I send an email to my friends and my family, I know exactly who got the email mm -hmm. and I know who donates and who doesn't. And if they didn't donate yet or they forgot, I can send a follow-up email saying, hey, there's not enough time left, or there's only 10 days left of my campaign, you can still make a donation if you want. What do you think? Digital fundraising in the year 2016, what's hot, what's new? Uh, I think storytelling is huge. Okay. And I think finding ways to tell compelling stories that are even shorter. Mm -hmm. So we've done amazing video stories and documentaries that sometimes are eight minutes long. And they are wonderful, and we're going to continue to produce them. But when you think about a campaign online for the mass, so bringing new people into your funnel, how do you tell a story or get your point across really quickly? Mm -hmm. The consumer insights are telling us that attention spans are shrinking. Um, so we actually need to be better about telling our story faster or getting people invested right off the bat. Video is... I think it's it's the new direction of how everything is moving in digital. Mm -hmm. um, being able to use videos. I mean, when I think about even if I buy a piece of furniture from Ikea, I'm not even reading the directions anymore. I'm going to YouTube, how do I put this piece of furniture together? Mm -hmm. I'm going to watch a video to piece it together. I think that with any type digital fundraising video and finding compelling ways to tell stories through video is becoming more and more important. Yeah. All right, so my last question would be, <laughs> is there anything else? Yeah. You already told us a lot why you fell in love with uh, Charity Water yeah. and especially as well uh, with uh, digital marketing, but uh, is there anything else we missed out and uh, you would like to tell us what, why, why did you fell in love with Charity Water and digital fundraising especially? Yeah, I mean, I fell in love with Charity Water and digital fundraising, I think because I'm a millennial. Mm -hmm. I, I grew up in the digital age. And so, you know, my phone, like I have it right here, my phone is always attached to my hip. I'm constantly consuming media online through that digital outlet. I also love digital because it's very inexpensive. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't hurt for us to be on Snapchat or Twitter or Facebook and testing and trying new things because we're not necessarily investing dollars into yeah. putting a really great post on Twitter or setting up a Facebook account. Um, 
And I fell in love with Charity Water for the transparency. Mm-hmm. So as a millennial, I wanted to know that even if I could give $20 or $30, that it was making a difference uh, in someone's life or I was a part of some type of a community. So I think that those are, those are the reasons. I think email is really powerful, which I also didn't mention. Sometimes I hear people say email is dead. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I actually believe that email is a very, very powerful tool. Mm -hmm. I do think, though, that with email now, you're being forced to think more about your audience. And Mm -hmm. you shouldn't assume that one email is a one-size-fits-all to your entire list. Mm -hmm. Think about how you segment your audience and what the messaging looks like in those different segments. I think that's also true with social media. I I love Twitter, Mm -hmm. but I have a younger sister who's in college. Uh, So she's in her early 20s. She's 22. And she doesn't use Twitter at all. I don't even know if she has a Twitter account, Mm -hmm. but she has sent 600,000 snaps on Snapchat since it started. So as we start to think about social media now, there's actually different demographics that are Mm -hmm. engaging with different social platforms. And you should think about your messaging and tailoring things to specific audiences across those platforms and across your email list also. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you very much. (laughs) Greetings again from Zurich to uh, Manhattan and uh, thank you very much. I wish you a wonderful day. (laughs) Yeah, you too. Thanks for thinking of including Charity Water. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.